Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Today we're talking about plants. Very exciting stuff, yes. When a company advertises that they use all these plants in their skincare, is it actually better for your skin? Are these natural extracts actually better for your skin or are they just a marketing tactic? We will find out today on today's episode of Hiram Won't Shut the Fuck Up. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I have a heavy emphasis on, why did I do that? <laughs> ingredient list. Like I want to know what's in the product and by reading an ingredient list, I determine whether I like that product or whether I don't like that product. And it took me a long time to be able to understand what an ingredient list is because believe me, it is completely normal to get a box, look at the back of it, and just be like, mm, mm, mm. I don't know what any of this means. And a lot of you guys have been asking like, well, Hiram, which ingredients are better than others? And are natural extracts good in skincare? Are they the same amount oils? What do they do? All of this type of confusion. And let me just explain, this is <laughs> like probably the most confusing realm within the skincare world, but I'm gonna try to explain it as simply as possible based off the knowledge that I've been able to attain and that I'm currently still gaining every single day. So let's get into it. I wanna start off the video by saying this video is sponsored by Piperberry. They're an awesome small skincare brand that is focused on effective natural extract based products with a heavy emphasis on environmental sustainability. I will be talking more about the products later on in the video, but I wanted to say thank you so much to Piperberry for sponsoring this video and thank you guys as always, like I always say in every single video, for supporting me to be able to get sponsorships. Thanks guys. Now when you look at the ingredient list for a product, you are probably going to read a lot of things that you don't understand what they are, like dipropylene glycol, caprylic triglyceride, all these terms that sound like you're pronouncing a Harry Potter spell. But you may notice some ingredients that you do recognize. For example, you may see aloe vera extract, you may see olive, green tea, or kale. All of these are plant extracts that are added into skincare for the purpose of helping maintain the health of the skin. Now there are thousands and thousands and thousands of plant extracts out there, which is why it's very difficult to determine which are best for your skin and which aren't. And honestly, if there was a simple process by which I could show you to figure out whether this ingredient is better than this ingredient, I would, bitch. It would make my job a lot easier. But in reality, every single plant extract is different. Some are very beneficial for the skin and some can pose a lot of risks for the skin. And it really just depends on the ingredient. Now, why are plant extracts added into skincare? Well, there's a few reasons. In the course of history, plants have been used to solve a variety of skin issues, usually primarily like inflammation, burns, and helping to accelerate the healing process. But I know a lot of you guys are probably reading your ingredient list like, um, Hiram, this has blueberry extract, like, how the fuck is blueberry gonna help my skin? And that's where we come to the topic of antioxidants and free radicals. So basically, our skin is constantly under attack every single day by free radicals. I am not even going to go into the chemical explanation because I really don't feel like it. A bitch is not in the mood. If you wanna learn about that, I've linked an article in the description box below by Lab Muffin where she talks all about the science behind it. But essentially, free radicals are attacking our skin every day. And usually they come in the form of sun exposure, pollution, cigarette smoke, and different things like that. Every time we are exposed to those, they are attacking our skin, which breaks down our skin's ability to look healthy, which is why we start to get wrinkles and dark spots, aging, and inflamed and irritated skin. Now, it's difficult to prevent this free radical damage, but one thing that is amazing at preventing it are antioxidants. Antioxidants are basically like a little protective force that helps to neutralize the free radicals so they don't damage your skin. They are amazing, and a lot of them can be found in natural extracts, which is why so many companies will just load up their products with so many different types of plant and fruit extracts to be able to help prevent against that free radical damage. Now with this knowledge, I will tell you right away, I am personally a fan of certain types of plant extracts. I believe that they have a myriad of positive benefits that they can deliver to your skin, reducing inflammation and redness, helping to protect your skin. I think there are so many plant extracts out there that can be really beneficial. And it's also what makes skincare so fun because you're able to experiment with all different types of extracts, plants, fruits, vegetables, and see what really works best for your skin. But along with this, there are some potential negative aspects to standard antioxidants in skincare products. The first thing being the skincare industry is largely privatized. And because of that, we don't have a lot of unbiased research available about a lot of ingredients. Usually if there is research out there for a certain ingredient, it's usually funded by a private company who will go out of their way to make sure that the only results yielded from that research are positive, which completely erases the unbiased status, which means that we really don't know if the ingredient is good or not. And that makes 
makes it really difficult because we don't know a lot about certain types of plant extracts. And this is where I tend to be very cautious with certain types of extracts. Now, I will also say there is a risk of sensitivity for all natural extracts out there. Anyone can have an allergic reaction or a sensitivity to any type of plant, which is why if you are someone with extremely sensitive skin, I always recommend using dermatologist approved skincare or just skincare like CeraVe, very clinically focused brands that only use ingredients that have been formulated in a very specific way in a specific lab to be able to reduce irritation as much as possible, which is where plant extracts aren't necessarily the best for everyone. But I will say for me personally, when I see that the positive benefits of a plant extract outweigh any of the negative possible side effects and evidence points to that, I am more than happy and excited to try all different types of plant extracts and see which work best for my skin. Now, I want to list out for you guys some of my favorite natural extracts and then some of my least favorite to kind of paint a picture. My favorite extracts are first Centella Asiatica extract. It's been used throughout history for its healing properties, but it's also been shown to reduce inflammation and redness in the skin. Aloe vera extract, which of course pretty much everyone knows for its soothing properties. Green tea extract, which is a very high quality ingredient that shows a lot of different types of benefits for the skin. The main one being reducing inflammation, but also possibly reducing aging. Kale extract, which can reduce excess sebum production and it's just good for the health of the skin. Ubiquinone, which is also known as Q10, an amazing antioxidant and my personal favorite for protecting against free radical damage. It's an ingredient that has some of the most research backing it up. And licorice root extract, which is also good for the antioxidant protection, but also soothing inflammation within the skin. Now, almost all of the ingredients I just listed off have a pretty good amount of evidence pointing towards the positive benefits and very little to no negative side effects have been seen from each of those ingredients. I personally, like seeing that because with so little information out there, when I see a lot of positive results and very few to no negative results, I am more willing to put my trust in those ingredients. Now for my least favorite extracts, really the only ones that I have a problem with are citrus based extracts. So like lemon extract, grapefruit extract, orange extract, or any of those extracts that are found within the citrus family. The reason why these have been shown to have some positive benefits in terms of exfoliation, but they've also been shown to increase sensitivity within the skin and they're relatively unsafe when exposed to sunlight, which means it can turn and cause more free radical damage within our skin, which is where I get a little bit concerned. Now, am I denying the positive benefits that come from these extracts? No, but am I a little bit more picky about not wanting them in my skincare because of the possible negative side effects? Absolutely. But in addition, it also has to do with the concentration at which these extracts are at. They are very low on the ingredient list and are in a wash off product. I personally don't really have a problem with them. They aren't on your skin long enough to become really unstable. And because they are a wash off product, you aren't exposing those ingredients to the sun, which risks its instability. But if they're very high up on the ingredient list and they're in a leave on product, that's where I get a little bit more concerned because of the possible side effects. If you are wondering about the difference between an extract and an oil, like an essential oil, for example, oils are much more purified and volatile, which means whatever benefits or negative side effects you're going to see from that natural ingredient, they're going to be highly concentrated within an oil, which for some oils can be really good. For example, avocado oil, amazing for the skin. But if it's like orange peel oil, for example, an essential oil, that's very irritating and really doesn't offer any benefits to the skin. So now that you know about natural extracts, I want to talk about Piper Berry, the brand who is sponsoring this video today. They are a brand that is focused on using natural extracts in their formulas, but also formulate without fragrance, essential oils, and other ingredients that can be possibly irritating to the face. The reason I wanted to include Piper Berry in this video is because I believe it's a brand that really does embrace the positive plant extracts out there and filling their products with as many of them as they possibly can. Piperberry sent both of the products that I'm talking about in today's video to me and honestly I've really enjoyed interacting with the brand because they are a small business and when it comes to who I work with I definitely have a soft spot in my heart for small businesses especially ones who are trying to operate in a really ethical and sustainable way because so often when you have these ginormous brands they are focused more on minimizing costs instead of minimizing negative environmental impacts, which is why I have respect for Piperberry and I wanted to work with them. I was actually really fortunate to be offered a sponsorship by them because I've tried one of their products before. I talked about it in a video. It is the Kale Protein Cleanser. I've really enjoyed this cleanser because it's just good for gently getting rid of all the dirt and sebum on the skin, but not overly stripping it. I would say it's similar to the Youth to the People one, but just a much more gentle and milky experience. I personally have enjoyed the results that I've seen within this cleanser. As for ingredients, including natural extracts that they use, they use gentle surfactant 
surfactants, kale and carrot extracts. Like I talked about before, kale is one of my favorite natural extracts out there. Chamomile, aloe, and cucumber, all of which are natural extracts that are focused on soothing and reassuring the skin. It's also formulated with green tea and ubiquinone or Q10, the ingredients that I also talked about before. In total, this is formulated with one, two, three, four of my top favorite natural extracts out there. As for a natural extract in this I don't like, it does include lemon extract, but because it is a wash off treatment, you only have it on your face for 30 seconds and it's low on the ingredient list and not a lemon essential oil, I'm okay with using it. One of the reasons I love this brand as well is because they are in glass packaging and they do have a focus on sourcing their ingredients sustainably, but they are a little bit more affordable than some of my favorite glass product brands out there, including Use to the People, for example, which is why I'm personally a fan. Another product from them is their Adaptogen Super Fruits Mask. Now, one of the main focuses of Piperberry is adaptogens. If you don't know what adaptogens are, they are mushroom extracts that are really good for reducing irritation and sensitivity. I've always loved adaptogens for my skin and I definitely was more drawn to the brand once I saw that. As for ingredients I like, this is formulated with kaolin, which is amazing for pulling out any dirt from within the skin. It also has aloe, glycerin, glycolic acid, lactic acid. Both of those are really great for exfoliating and getting rid of those dead skin cells on the surface of your skin, as well as two different different forms of green tea extract, grapeseed oil, jojoba oil, which are both amazing for hydrating the face, and tamanu oil, which is one of my favorite ingredients for brightening, hydrating, and soothing the skin. This has so many different types of beneficial plant extracts, but the main ones that I like, besides the ones I already mentioned, are blueberry extract, cranberry, licorice, grape, raspberry, and so many more, all of which are really beneficial. As for extracts that I don't like in this, it is formulated with lemon and orange, but similar to the cleanser, this is a wash off treatment. They aren't essential oils and you aren't exposing your skin to sunlight which I'm personally just a lot more comfortable using. See, I actually really like this mask because usually when it comes to mixing natural extracts and exfoliating products I get a little bit nervous because my skin is a little bit more on the sensitive side and because this is formulated with a pretty good amount of glycolic acid I was like mm, I don't know about this but I actually really enjoyed it. You do get a little bit of a tingling sensation but one of the reasons I loved it is because it exfoliates my skin without creating a lot of redness and irritation. So many times when I an exfoliating mask after I wash it off I'm just like oh, okay for the next few hours I'm not going to show my face to anyone no one because I look like a beet but funny enough I decided to do this mask again right before this video to prove a point as to how my skin looks and honestly if it was a typical exfoliating mask I wouldn't be able to film for hours because of the redness that I see in my skin but I literally washed this off 10 minutes before I started filming and I don't know. I feel like my skin looks kind of good. I like the results. <laughs> but yeah, a really good face mask, also in glass packaging and with an ingredient list that I really like. Now you guys are probably thinking, Hiram, what the fuck? Where did you get all this information? How did you learn all of this? Let me just say, if I can learn this shit, you guys can learn 10 times more because my brain was not meant to comprehend this type of stuff. I try to source my information from a variety of sources, but the main online ones that I usually go to are first the Paula's Choice Ingredient Dictionary and NC Decoder. Both of these websites are really amazing because anytime I'm looking at an ingredient list and I'm like, I don't know what that is, or I don't know if that's good. I will search it in those websites and I'll find a ton of information about each of those ingredients and whether they are more beneficial for the skin or less beneficial. Now, some people don't like these websites, but in my experience, out of all the different websites I've found where you can search and find information about ingredients, these websites tend to have the most scientific research backing up their statements. And wherever I find the most scientific information, that's where I'm going to base my opinion on. In addition to that, I try to source my information from dermatology and chemists. For online dermatologists and chemists, I absolutely love Lab Muffin Beauty Science. She is definitely one of the most unbiased chemists out there in terms of just providing basic scientific information about ingredients. And also Dr. Dre, which, who is a dermatologist here on YouTube. I like her stance on skincare because she is very overly protective, which is definitely my stance when it comes to skincare. You guys know I'm always like fragrance, essential oils, drying alcohols, all that kind of stuff. Not really because those are bad ingredients and they will destroy your skin, but because there's a lot of risks associated with those ingredients and I don't want my skin or any of your guys' skin to be possibly exposed to any of those ingredients if they aren't necessary in a skincare routine. And I find that all of these sources have adopted that same philosophy. Thank you again to Piperberry for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And yeah, those are all of my thoughts. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to hear all of your feedback because I am learning every single day about new plant extracts, which ones are good, which ones aren't. If you have any sources out there that you get your information from, I would love to learn about them. Please include them below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.